Apostle, I'm struggling with sickness. Go to that which is written. Open your Bible. Find out. There were sick people in the Bible who were healed. What did they do? This world is not designed for spirits. It's a three-dimensional framework of existence. Three-dimensional entity. So in case a spirit has jurisdiction within this context, a man permitted that spirit to function. In fact, prayer is earthly permission for heavenly interference. God desires that across the nations of the earth, including our nation, that there be a display and a manifestation of the power and the glory of God once again. There have been prophecies from scripture and even from patriarchs, fathers of faith, who are now part of the cloud of witnesses, that before Jesus Christ returns, there will once again be a wave of the spirit a move of the spirit across the globe history is full of people who left these prophetic words some of them as their final words to the earth as they transited and thankfully some of them their words were captured thanks to technology and preserved for our generation and even the generation to come that many of them told us that as much as we saw God use them that that was not the best yet that there were still greater manifestations of the power of God hallelujah the Spirit of God is moving across the earth from Africa to Europe to America across the continents of the earth stirring a heart a fire revival that we will see the global harvest like never before we will see transformation territories that will be brought in subjection to christ and some of them it will happen in one moment shorter and sooner than we think would happen and this is even by the spirit of god so god desires that before jesus returns there be a manifestation of the power and of the glory of god once again upon the earth and this is very, very important. Very, very important. You must believe this. Let's go to our text for tonight. John chapter 14 and verse 12. Jesus is speaking and he makes a very profound statement. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, he says, The works that I do, he shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do. Why? Because I go unto my Father. I want you to look at this statement very carefully. Do not assume you understand it. I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking, the way and the truth, the works that I do, all of the supernatural manifestations and everything you saw me do whilst on earth, it says you shall do, and greater works than this. For many years, I studied this scripture and it disturbed me because in my mind, I thought, what could anybody do that would be greater than what Jesus has done? Hallelujah. The word incarnate, we're talking about, not an angel, not some prophet somewhere. Jesus himself makes a very serious statement that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do. And then he says, greater works greater works than these that you see shall you do and the reason is because i go unto my father hallelujah for our discussion tonight i want to start by giving us three reasons why we should believe in the concept of greater works there are three reasons that i want to point out why every believer must believe for a certainty that before Jesus returns, this greater work agenda is doable and will be achieved in the world of men. Number one, the first reason why you should believe in the concept of greater works is that Jesus himself said so. The very first reason why we must believe that it is possible to walk and live the reality of greater works is that Jesus himself said so. Numbers chapter 23, please, and verse 19. Jesus as God said so. And the Bible tells us here without confusion that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? So we know for a certainty that because this came out of the lips of Jesus himself, 
this agenda will not fail this agenda will not be aborted this agenda will not be lost that greater works than these shall you do number two why should we believe as believers as the church of the lord jesus christ that before jesus returns there will be a manifestation of greater works number two the believer has been given i, I wrote here authority through christ we have authority today through christ jesus that has positioned us to a realm where we are able to manifest greater works the believer has been given authority today through Christ. Four scriptures very quickly. In Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 to 20. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power, New King James I believe would translate it to authority, has been given unto me in heaven and in the earth. Verse 19 says, Go ye therefore go with this consciousness that all authority in heaven and the earth has been given to me it says go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost verse 20 it says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and whilst you do this have this consciousness that lo i am with you all way even to the end of the world why should we believe in the concept of greater works Jesus has been exalted and the believer through Christ has been given access to authority in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 Luke 10 19 New King James please Luke 10 19 he says behold I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you i give you i give you authorities the greek word exousia the capacity to legislate on my behalf i give you authority to trample upon serpents scorpions and over all the power of the enemy Listen to me. It is important for you to understand that the very authority that was conferred upon Jesus is what he gave the church. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6, we can go back to KJV. Ephesians 2 and verse 6, the Pauline epistle now. The Bible says Paul speaking and had raised us up we have discussed this in previous teachings raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in christ the bible declares that every believer in christ has been raised up with christ and we have been made to sit together very simple elementary concept but it contains such profound power if and when understood he has raised us up and when you back down to Ephesians chapter 1, it lists the implication, all the things that we have been raised above. And it talks about thrones, principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, and every name that is named not only in this world, but even in the world that is to come. The second reason why we must believe in the concept of greater works. Number three, what is the third reason why we must believe in the concept of greater works the bible tells us that we have access to the spirit of god on account of the finished work of jesus christ every believer today has access to the spirit of god the presence of the holy spirit in us and with us is our guarantee that we are able to walk greater work acts 1 and verse 8 it says ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me are we together the capacity to be witnesses is predicated upon the coming the presence the remaining of the holy spirit this acts chapter 1 verse 8 officially acts chapter 2 began what we call the dispensation of the spirit in the old testament it was god for us 
while Jesus walked upon the earth, he was God with us, Emmanuel. And from Acts chapter 2 until Jesus returns, it is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, God in us. Jesus said, he shall be with you and then shall be in you. The presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer and backing that believer up is a guarantee and the surety, the confidence, the basis of our believing that such a concept is not just a figment of man's imagination, not just some parable somewhere, but God's desire and intent and will happen before Jesus returns. Acts 10, 38, Peter speaking in the house of Cornelius, he said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth even Jesus, the son of the living God, was anointed with the Holy Ghost and then anointed with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good. Remember when he walked upon the earth, the men in those days testified that they had never seen it in this fashion. Remember that these were people who had honor to history. They had heard about the things that Elijah did. They had heard about the wonderful manifestations of the Spirit. They heard about the mighty hand of God, the works of God in the life of the Israelites in Egypt. But when Jesus showed up, they saw a dimension of the hand of God, his teachings, and the demonstration of the Spirit in his life was phenomenal. They testified that they had not seen it in this fashion. And the Bible tells us, Paul speaking, that he went about doing good, healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for the simple reason that God, God, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, was with him. So with these three reasons, it's important for us to be convinced beyond any shadow of doubt that God's idea about greater works is true. And you must position yourself by faith that I will be part of those that God will use in this end time to birth this greater work agenda. If you believe that, shout a believing amen. amen. The second thing I want to discuss is the controversial word greater. For many years, it troubled me until the Lord gave me light in this scripture. And for many believers, there have been all kinds of theological debates as to whether he meant greater. Most people would say it was a, some figurative statement. Why would Jesus say greater works than these? It was as though he was demeaning himself. It was as though he was expressing some form of limitation. And you would not imagine that the son of the living God, God incarnate, will speak as though he were limited. So what was his idea about greater? It's important and I trust God that together we will solve this problem once and for all. This is the value and the benefit of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. The Bible says he will guide you into all truth. If the Holy Spirit does not open your eyes to see, you will only end up getting confused the more you study scripture. Hallelujah. I asked God this and he answered me in a very profound way. And I want to give you directly the answer that God gave me. I said, Lord, why would you say that greater works? What does that mean? Greater works than what Jesus did? Whereas the Bible already told us in Acts chapter 20 and verse 30 that there were many other miracles that Jesus did which were not documented in this book, John 20, 30. That many other miracles did Jesus which were not documented in this book. It says 31, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that in believing you might have life through his name. So we know for a fact that there were many other miracles Jesus did. Only God knows what other phenomenal miracles he did. Yet in the, with the awareness of the miracles he did that we do not even know, he said, greater works than this shall you do. Let me tell you for a fact that if Jesus said greater, he really meant greater. Hallelujah. It's only that our idea of greater is what needs to be probed and edited in light of scripture. But if Jesus said greater, he was not missing words. He meant greater. So journey with me through scripture as we explore the implication of this word greater. Why would Jesus use the word greater 
was it that he was limited is it true that he was limited the Bible tells us for a fact that there were certain miracles that Jesus could not perform and it does not credit it to the limitation of his ability. It credits it to the unbelief of the people and yet Jesus seems to be expressing limitation perhaps for the first time that there is something you will do that I could not do. Two reasons. Number one, the first reason why Jesus used the word greater to express what the saints would do. Listen to this. While Jesus walked upon the earth, he largely did all that he did alone. While Jesus walked upon the earth, he largely did all that he did alone. But today, all believers can carry out this mandate and have access to the Spirit, bringing greater efficiency. So when Jesus says greater works, he also meant greater efficiency because while I walked upon the earth, I was the only one who had the spirit without measure to the degree that empowered me to do what I was doing. Now, every believer in Christ can have access to this spirit. Are we together now? When Jesus walked upon the earth, if he was in Nazareth, he could not be in Caesarea Philippi at the same time. Jesus himself revealed that he was limited and oftentimes he would say, let us go over to the other side. As God, he had the ability to be omnipresent, the word being everywhere. But while he was trapped in a human material body, he could not be everywhere. So when he says greater works, it is greater works because of greater efficiency. Number one, as a result of the widespread distribution of the Spirit of God, that it will no longer be trapped in a single individual, but that all believers, according to the prophecy of Joel, are we together? That I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and so on and so forth. Your young men will see visions. The first reason why that statement is true and why he used the word greater is that while he walked upon the earth, he largely did all he did alone. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 12 and verse 24, Acts chapter 12 and verse 24, except, sorry, John, John 12, 24, please. My apologies, John 12, 24. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, the Bible says it abided alone. But if it die, it can bring forth much fruit. That means if you hold a grain or two of corn, you can eat it, it can't feed a family, it cannot even eat you. you I, mean, I mean, you cannot even eat it, you swallow it like a pill. And that's the end of it. But when you plant that same corn, you are going to have at least two years of corn as a result of that. And you can now, if you plant that one again, very soon you're going to have corn enough to feed the nation. And Jesus is saying, I am alone. If I die, I will bring a multiplier effect because my death will give the saints access to the life of God and access to the Holy Spirit. Greater works because you will not be alone. It will be a widespread manifestation of bodies that have been available to be used by God, even by the Spirit. You have that down? Now, the second reason is what is most important as to why Jesus used the concept of greater. And I want you to listen very carefully and let this enlighten your mind indeed. The first time the Lord told me I was, I was, I was amazed that it had been in the Bible and yet I did not have the eyes to see. Now, here's what I wrote. In spite of the many miracles Jesus performed while on earth, there was one miracle which was the greatest need of man he could not perform. There was one miracle that Jesus could not perform, not before the cross, not after the cross, not until after the cross. Out of the many miracles that he did, he calmed the sea, he casted out devils, but there was one miracle and that miracle represented the greatest need of man. He did not have the ability and the allowance to perform that miracle because that miracle will demand death. The one miracle Jesus could not perform, all the saints can perform it today. Greater works. 
Jesus himself, watch this. He could forgive sins. He told many people, your sins are forgiven. But Jesus could not give anyone eternal life before his death. That one miracle, Jesus himself, there was no message to preach that men would believe. There was no blood of the remission of sins, yes. There was no death on the cross, yet. There was no resurrection, yet. So that miracle that represented the answer to the true state of man could not be performed by Jesus before the cross. So when he said greater works, he meant that the believer will have an advantage and be able to communicate the gospel in its entirety. Are we together now? Every problem Jesus solved while he was on earth was a symptom of man's real problem. The real problem of man was that he was alienated from the life of God. He needed more than healing. He needed more than bread. Are we together now? Everybody Jesus healed still died. Everybody Jesus fed still went hungry. But that one miracle of reconciliation, it demanded that he would have to die, pay the price with his blood. Let me show you three scriptures. Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14, then we'll jump to 19 and 20. Watch this. Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. 13. It says, who had delivered us, watch this now, from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14. It says, in whom we have redemption. How? Not by a pronouncement. Every other miracle Jesus performed, he performed it with his word. But redemption happened beyond his word. His blood and his life had to, had to be shed for man to be saved. Redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Verse 20 now. It says, and having made peace. How? Through the blood of his cross. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, Paul is speaking, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Reconciliation was not a miracle that happened just by a divine pronouncement. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. It says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So when Jesus says greater works than this shall you do. He meant that you will be empowered to in partnership with the Holy Spirit attend to the greatest need of man. He was going to make the way available but will become advocates of that truth, bearing witness to the truth. Next scripture, Ephesians 1, 7. Ephesians 1, 7. Paul again is speaking and he says, in whom we have redemption, are you seeing it clearly from scripture that true redemption is only through the blood of Jesus? The forgiveness of sin according to the riches, the abundance of his grace. So Jesus worked many great miracles, but there was one that could not be performed in his earth work. The price for that miracle that happened to be the greatest miracle representing the greatest need of man could not be performed while Jesus was alive. He had to die, go to Hades, shed his blood. He had to resurrect by the glory of the Father for that miracle to happen to men. And today we thank God that that miracle is possible, that men can be reconciled to Jesus, that we who were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, the Bible says, we have been brought nigh through the blood of the eternal covenant. That we can come boldly to the throne of grace today and obtain mercy, find grace to help even in time of need. Are we together? So when Jesus says greater, it is important for us to know that he calls it greater because number one, the spirit of God has made the presence of Jesus unlimited. It is amazing that while I am here preaching, there is some preacher somewhere declaring the counsel of God. There is some evangelist somewhere, the same Holy Spirit sponsoring this spiritual advocacy. There is someone in his room watching a message right now. There is another person doing a one-on-one -on -one evangelism. 
there is another person reaching people in the village there is another person speaking in French another in Spanish another in English Hausa another in Yoruba another in Igbo and all of these men Jesus could not do all of that alone but now greater works can happen because the Holy Spirit has made this possible hallelujah imagine if you were the only one who had the ability to preach the gospel just one out of eight billion people number one you will most likely die either of demonic attack or exhaustion are we together when you read about the world's revival one of the tragedies of men respectfully speaking like Ivan Roberts who was the pioneer of the world's revival the um, history now tells us that that man literally he died of exhaustion and fatigue because there was such a move of God the fire of God was spreading you know across his region and then he had to be at the helm of affairs managing the move of God at that point and for sheer exhaustion I think out of all God's generals recorded as we know he was the one who died youngest and it was largely it was not just of a demonic attack we presume he was just exhausted as a human being can I tell you every time you stop men from accessing the life and the power of God and accessing the relevant graces that help them number one you are doing yourself a disservice because you will literally die of fatigue and exhaustion there is a reason why God gave the ability for grace to be distributed from one person to the other so that you are limited in terms of your assignment and then your body can be able to take it can take your spirit while you serve there are many people today who are literally dying of fatigue I would say the reason is because they are afraid of empowering and raising others Jesus was not he said greater works there was one Jesus but there are many witnesses one Jesus the faithful witness but today there are many witnesses I don't know how many of them are in this place but I presume everyone under the sound of my voice witnesses mandated and anointed to bear witness to the light and there are many thousands and ten thousands of others following online witnesses because Jesus said greater works Jesus met all kinds of people. He could rehabilitate their minds and prepare them to expect to receive salvation when all was said and done. But there was nobody, no mention of anybody receiving eternal life before Jesus died. He forgave sins. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. But that was impossible because sin is first in nature before an outworking. You can do your best using the principles of the Lord to stop the outworking. But that nature, the psalmist said, in sin, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. Are we together? Greater works. Greater works. Hallelujah. There is what we can do that Jesus could not do before his death. Not as a result of limitations, but he had to subscribe to the protocol that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Today, we can stand and preach on the strength of what he has done and call many people to the cross and with joy and in a moment, that translation can happen from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son. I think he was... Billy Graham of blessed memory. I listened to one of his profound crusades. This was a crusade that he held probably in the 80s. And he was diagnosing the true state, the cancer that man really needed to be healed of. And he made references to all kinds of sicknesses that plague men and the efforts being made by the then world you know of medical science to solve and to cure many problems and he said the greatest of them the cancer that really needed healing in the life of man was that cancer of separation from Jesus Christ hallelujah now what is the ultimate goal of greater works to what end is this agenda what is this about why is Jesus insistent on the saints stepping into this dimension of greater works? I wrote here and I want you to listen and write, please. The ultimate goal for greater works, 
the ultimate goal for greater works is that the knowledge of the glory of God fills the entire earth drawing many to Jesus you see why I was profoundly blessed by the worship ministration of our precious people here that the entire goal for greater works is that the knowledge of the glory of God that it fills the entire earth every nation every city every nook and cranny drawing many to Jesus Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14 Habakkuk 2 and verse 14 read with me please ready one to read for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea let's read it one more time one to go for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea you know how much water is in the earth the earth is about 70 percent water as we know and then about 30 percent land and that I believe that may even be an old statistic because of things like global warming and the rest are we together now yes that the ice is melting and eating into land and so there is more land space being chopped up by water right now and the Bible says in that similitude the knowledge he never said the glory of the Lord the knowledge of the glory of the Lord and I've taught you that the glory of God consists of everything that makes God God his love his mercy his power he says that the knowledge of it the knowledge of his love, the knowledge of his mercy, the knowledge of his power, the knowledge of his grace, that it should cover the earth like waters the sea. This is the reason why we need greater works. To this end, that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord would cover the earth as waters the sea. Isaiah 40 and verse 5. Isaiah 40 and verse 5. It says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. If that will happen through your life, shout a loud amen. amen. And the glory of the Lord, keep it there please media. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. It says, and all flesh shall see it together. All flesh, European flesh, American flesh, Asian people. All flesh shall see it. That means that revelation will not be hidden. No. It will not be boxed and hidden. There are things that God is going to be doing through the church before he returns. That it does not matter who loves God or who does not love God. It will be widespread news that this is what Jesus is doing. Testimonies and manifestations of his power in and through the saints. And may you be part of that glorious army in the name of Jesus that as the wave of his spirit and power is sweeping across the nations that he will find a worthy vessel in you the glory of the Lord the love of the Lord the mercy of the Lord the power of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it reminds me of an old song from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down i will sing of the mercies of the lord i will sing of the mercies of the lord with my mouth will i make it known from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down i will sing of the mercies of the lord from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down i will sing of the glory of the lord from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down I will sing of the favor of the Lord. You see, listen, I was preaching earlier on for a dear friend this morning. And one of the things that I was teaching God's people is that when the glory of the Lord is revealed, 
no one person is going to reveal every dimension of his glory because his glory is multifaceted there are those who have been mandated to reveal his favor there are those mandated to reveal his power there are those mandated to reveal his creativity while that grace comes from heaven be sensitive to what dimension of God you pick Food to grant them access to understanding the communion and he broke himself into many dimensions only God knows what dimension he gave you there are people who have received his creativity there are people who have received his healing power or a robot came and he said my assignment is to reveal the healing power of Jesus to the nations full stop that was his assignment if you called him to teach on any other thing he was a prosperous man he knew how to walk by faith or a Roberts University today stands as a monument a testament of a man's knowing God and yet he believed that the theme of his life was to reveal the healing power of Jesus to the nations when we talk about the knowledge of the glory of God covering the earth ladies and gentlemen hear me if you do not rise and manifest in the spirit and in destiny you will rob our world of seeing a dimension of God that has been hidden in you every book you are reading is the glory of God revealed are we together now every manifestation of his healing power is a dimension of his glory revealed imagine if i resisted the assignment god gave me only god knows how many salvations would have been aborted through that disobedience and there are many people seated right now there are various dimensions of god we're going to sing that song one more time take it higher for me sing it with understanding in your spirit and let it be from the depth of your heart that with my life, with my mouth, with everything, I will make it known. You may not have the opportunity to travel like Billy Graham and Red Hat Bunker, but that which he has committed unto you, you must make up your mind that the nations will see the glory of God revealed in and through your life. It may be through singing like our worship people. And as you raise songs of worship, the nations will lend God as you hear the sounds. For some of you, you are a kingdom financier. A financial apostle you caught that dimension of God the nations are waiting there are evangelisms that cannot happen because you have refused to contend for kingdom wealth and supply that dimension of God I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth will I make it known from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down i will sing of the mercies of the lord i will sing of the mercies of the lord with my mouth will i make it known from the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord From the rising From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord I don't know what dimension you are going to be singing it is not only your voice that can sing your hands can sing his praises your wealth can sing his praises your mind can sing his praises in one minute declare the dimension you know he has given you to reveal for someone you are a revelation of the creativity of the Christ for another person you are a revelation of the power of Jesus Take a minute and pray. From the rising of the sun, right on till it's going down, I will sing of the glory of the Lord. I will sing of the power of the Lord. I will sing of the wisdom of the Lord. I will sing of the favor of the Lord. I will sing 
sing of the mercies of the Lord With my mouth will I make it known From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord I will sing of the mercies of the Lord I received the song by the Spirit years ago and every time I teach on this area I'm reminded of that song Let the weight of your glory fall Let it cover all the earth Let the weight of your glory fall ah. Let it cover all let the weight of your glory fall Through my life Let it cover all the earth Let the weight of your glory fall Let it cover all the earth Let the weight of your Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords. Let your kingdom reign in my life Adonai 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 Set declaration from your spirit Adonai Listen let your kingdom come that's a prayer from a hungry generation let your kingdom come ah, let your kingdom come hey, let your kingdom come let your kingdom come in and through my life let your kingdom come Let your kingdom come Shabra shabala kaparuska friend of Let Adonai Lamb of God You are worthy Worthy of my praise King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. 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 Pray. Let your kingdom reign in my life. Let your kingdom reign in my life. Let your kingdom reign in my life. Beyond every other agenda. Let your kingdom reign in my life. 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 Let your kingdom come. 
let your kingdom come in my life let your kingdom rule let your kingdom rule Hear me, ladies and gentlemen, I assure you by the Spirit of the living God that before Jesus returns, the nations will see a display of His grace once again. And the purpose of it will be nothing else, no glorification of self and the flesh, but that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, the knowledge of the love of the Lord, it will be beyond one-on-one -on -one evangelism. It will be beyond just passing tracks as important as that is. It will be a wave, a tsunami of his power and his grace across the nations of the earth. One supernatural manifestation of his hand that will rattle the foundation of nations. This will happen by the spirit and it will not just happen through men. It will not just happen through women. It will happen also through children everybody says the spirit will be poured upon all flesh adult flesh child flesh educated flesh uneducated flesh elderly flesh young flesh men and women will access power in the spirit do you believe this this is what we call kingdom come is an agenda that will never fail the jealousy of God is behind this agenda he would rather a nation perish than this agenda fail please be seated if you can in one minute my heart was stirred up every time we talk about the revelation of the glory of the Lord it does something to my spirit because this is the focal point of the believers pursuit Let your kingdom reign in my life. 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 Man of God, God is speaking to you. Beyond building of churches, he desires his kingdom to find expression beyond marketing of flesh and self he desires his kingdom to be established beyond koinonia beyond denominationalism he desires his kingdom to move past the barriers of denomination to move past it is even beyond the pulpit the revelation of the glory of God is beyond good preaching beyond Greek and Hebrew that he wants the entire strata of human experience and existence to experience everything that is contained in God. His wisdom, his power, his grace. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, as mighty as God is, he's counting on us. I told my dear people in Lagos that we have known the God who sends men, but we must know the men sent by God. The world is gradually coming into an appreciation of the fact that there is a God in heaven. But God is revealed when his men are revealed. We call it the reflection principle. Glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you. God cannot be revealed in our generation when the men that are so called and anointed and furnished by him refuse to be revealed. The earnest expectation of creation, the Bible says, awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. The goal of the greater work agenda is to see that the knowledge of the glory of God, that it fills the entire earth, drawing many to Jesus. John 4 48 Jesus was speaking and he said except ye see miraculous signs and wonders ye will not believe listen to me we live in a time we live in a dispensation where men will need to see a display of the glory of God in its entirety to believe men will not believe cheaply just because of some religious sentiments proposed by Christians 
Gone are the days where people believe blindly. Their convictions need to be heightened through the display, the manifestation of God's glory. It says the Greeks seek for a sign. Except ye see miraculous signs and wonders, ye will not believe. I make reference again to John 20, 30. The Bible says, and many other miracles did Jesus. John 20, 30. In the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book, 31 says, but these are recorded, written, that ye might believe. They are not just recorded to show that he's so powerful, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing, you will have life. Hallelujah. Greater works will lead to greater conviction. Greater conviction will lead to greater salvation. Greater acknowledgement of Christ in the world of men. Greater acknowledgement of the Christ in the world of men. When there is a display of greater works, listen to me, it will bring about greater conviction. When there is greater conviction, it will bring greater salvation in all its ramification. And when there is greater salvation, it will bring a greater acknowledgement of the Christ in the world of men. I'm reminded of Daniel chapter 3. Please give it to us from verse 28, I believe. Nebuchadnezzar, by reason of the display of the glory of the Lord, fire not having authority and power over the three Hebrew boys. Here was the conclusion of that matter. He said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god. As a result, 29. Therefore, he says, I make a decree that every people, my goodness, can this happen in our world today? That the president of a nation, because of the manifestation of the power of God, will be compelled to make a decree, not a religious decree, not a bias, as a result of what God would have done in his life. Every people, nation, language, which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. What a decree. And their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this manner. There is no other God that can deliver. I have seen many try to heal, but none can heal like Jesus. I have seen doctors do their best to manage patients, but how about the great physician that can heal without a surgery? Hallelujah. Mm. this is what God is doing across the nations I believe it he's bringing everything in obedience to Christ he's rearranging everything in obedience to Christ he's recreating everything in obedience to Christ Rebuilding everything in obedience to Christ. 